Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Having fun today, man. You can't any day that starts with ABBA. ABBA is going to be a good day. And uh, LJ, how can I tell that you're dancing? Because I'm dancing. Come on, man. It's it's. it's... <laughs> Come on, it's Fernando. It's a classic. Uh, the podcast is your home for rational crypto news and objectivity, leaving emotion at the door, talking about what we like, why we like it, where we see it going. We are not offering financial advice. We are telling you, uh, <laughs> we are telling you what we do, and that is all. We don't slow down. We don't let up. Full speed is our only speed. I'm your host, Scott, pragmatic investor who has won and lost fortunes. Joining me, as always, the greatest producer of all time, Bell. How are you doing this morning, Bell? You know what? I'm torn between laughing and yelling at you because you freaking rickrolled me right before you started playing ABBA. I, I, I did. We're usually on uh, about a half hour before we go live and we just listen to uh, listen to music and we chat about what we're going to be chatting about. And uh, I rickrolled her because come on, man, Rick Astley, dude, we, it's coming here on the show one of these times and you'll be dancing and it's to not that. Like I can, <laughs> and it's not like I can do anything to stop it. No, I own it. I own the uh, I own the the. Uh, control on this side of the board. So yeah, if I want to listen to Rick Astley, we're going to listen to Rick Astley. Uh, here at the podcast, we have a tendency to talk about what others are not talking about and bringing the focus on the use case cryptos, because as we know, these are what drive the market to bring innovation to a world that desperately needs it. Status quo, no longer acceptable. Time for technological revolution. Welcome to crypto. Welcome to the podcast. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, we, God, we got too much to get to uh, today. It's a good thing that we're going live tonight, Bell, so that maybe we can uh, we can kind of cover that up. Uh, we'll get into the money stuff. Bell's going to give you some show notes here. Go ahead, Bell. You got the main screen. Talk about what we're doing tonight. Tonight, we've actually got a very special guest. Uh, we've actually got Henry from Lunar Space on the stream this evening. Lunar Space is a very interesting project. They're enterprise-facing, actually. And uh, there's a lot to unpack there. So we're really looking forward to having him on and getting into that. We did. Uh, we do also have Tom from Plank coming in on Thursday. And Eric is going to be with us tomorrow from Astro Vault. So we're coming at you with a lot of stuff. Yeah, we're uh, we, we had to fit Eric in. Uh we're we're booked till like all the way to the end of the month on the Tuesdays and Thursdays show, man. We got a lot of we got a lot of good guests coming on, a lot of neat projects coming on, and uh, but uh, Astro Vault's had so much going on lately that we we didn't want to table it until like May to to bring Eric back on. So we're gonna get him back yeah. on tonight. Bring your Astro Vault questions. You guys know the drill. Uh, this is uh, I actually look. I've been playing around with a After Effects, and I made the uh, Astro Vault logo the Eclipse Edition. So <laughs> taking myself a round of applause for that. Huh? Uh, just the, played the around. One, <laughs> the one bit of financial advice that I gave yesterday was actually relating to the eclipse. And it's like, OK, guys, don't use your gains to go out and buy plants right after the eclipse. Just don't do it. Bad idea. Oh, yeah. You got the whole uh <laughs> <laughs> little shop of horror things coming around. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be great. All right, let's get into some money, guys. We got a lot of stuff that we got to cover tonight. I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to stay on point as much as I can. Uh, Bitcoin doing what Bitcoin does now. It, it it stays interesting in in this range. I like it in this range, but not for the reason that you that you think, guys. Look, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi, not at all. I get my Bitcoin exposure through Atom, Osmo, everything else that runs with Bitcoin, which is effectively any blue chip any blue chip is gonna more any meaning anything i was i used to say top 25 but adam has fallen all the way down to i think 30 or 31 so we're just gonna say wherever adam is and anything higher rank than that is you got to run more or less with uh with bitcoin so that's how i get my bitcoin exposure and out in the DeFi uh is where i get my my gains on those so I like uh, I'm I like the range anywhere in there 68 to to 71 72. It's a pretty good range because my V3 pools more or less uh, stay in range. Now we're uh, introduced bringing you over here to uh, Camelot again. I've I've spent a lot of time over on Camelot. I've been over here since as long as there's been a Camelot, but I'm over here specifically for these pools for the V3 pools and. 
anything that I'm going to pair up over here, there's only one little wild card that I'll play around with, and that's Arbitrum Ethereum. But uh, Arbith uh, Arbith uh, Arbitrum and ETH have broken apart so much that it's really, really tough uh, to keep those in range. So you got two different pools. Both of them are moving different directions. Or I'm sorry, two different pairings. They're both moving different directions, and it's really, really hard to stay in range on those. So... It, uh, it 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 doesn't exactly work for me, but I I like to pair up with uh, USDC particularly over here. Now, what you're going to experience in V3 pools for those of you who uh, who are not uh, savvy in these or haven't really came over here to play around in these is uh, uh, very very high APRs for a very very short duration. Now that's kind of the kicker and why I pick the pools that I pick over here because a V3 pool is going to have. Uh, impermanent loss and it's going to be brutal so when i'm pairing up over here i want to make sure that either token that gets liquidated gets liquidated into another token that i like to hold and in this case i'd like to hold usdc because it's usdc and i'd like to hold ethereum because you know number two it's blue chip so i have no particular issue with this this pool drifting so when ethereum kind of runs away it gets uh ILD into USDC and USDC never runs away. USD, well, I hope it doesn't ever run away. Uh, but I, I want to try to keep those things so that I can milk that nice little APR. Now you get a couple things over here. Uh, you, you get uh, your your fees, of course. Those are always nice. But they uh, they sweeten the pot over here with uh, Grail, and that's that's kind of a nice little sweetener on top of this. So. That's more or less why I'm going to hang over here in these V3 pools. But you're going to see these numbers are going to flip all around constantly. So when I set up this pool just yesterday because my last one got liquidated because Ethereum and we, we got some Mirai that we have to get to. But uh, Ethereum had a uh, hell of a run right there. And that actually knocked me completely out of range on that. So all of the Ethereum got liquidated, became USDC. It is what it is. But. I te have a tendency to uh, hold on to just naked Ethereum over here, uh, and I leave it liquid just on the off chance that I do get liquidated out of uh, or uh, that I do get knocked out of a V3 that I have uh, Ethereum to put back into it. So right now I'm a little low. I only have about $1,000 worth of Ethereum over there because it all went back into this pool right here. Uh, as soon as it got crushed and turned into USDC, then we just pulled it right back in. Now, you're going to be seeing that number is going to change off it. I mean, that is a uh, rolling APR, but you're going to earn pretty well on these things. The problem is that it is absolutely going to get uh, knocked out of range, and it's going to happen often. So you, you have to, you kind of got to uh, choose your poison over here. Now, I tend to stay in the common range. One of our other uh a couple of our other Discord people spend some time over here, and I think Madshot, uh, he spends a lot of time over here. He's more of a wild man than I am this in that he chooses a narrow band, a really, really narrow range. And if you want to get that maximum APR, you're going to have to pick the narrow range. Problem is that narrow range on these is maybe 7%. And if you've ever been in crypto for any length of time, you know that 7% doesn't stick around real long. Uh, I mean, here it is, perfect example. From here to here, you got wiped out. I mean, that's it. All the Ethereum got liquidated. It became whatever the other side of the pool was, and, and you got smoked. Uh, the only way that something like that is going to last and hold is if maybe you were into Arbitrum, and uh, Arbitrum did the same amount of range, so that as they're both going up, they're staying in uh, their relative range to each other. So the pool, it may have held, it might have made it, but when you get a big, big pop like that on Ethereum, uh, like what we had yesterday, when you get that big, big pop, you're most likely going to get smoked out of whatever you're in over here. And then you got a choice. Now, you don't have to clear the position. You can stay in the position, wait for the tokens to come back down, and uh, you'll start earning rewards on it again. I'm uh, I'm not that patient. I never have been. And the only kick difference here is that I just had turned all of this right here, became USDC. So I have no issue with that. I have no issue picking that up and, uh, you know, just jumping back into other pools, particularly if you kept, uh, particularly if you kept 
some uh, liquid Ethereum over here, then it's not a big deal. So you got the Ethereum gains as Ethereum popped up. Everything I held over here popped up with it. Everything I had over the pool ended up becoming USDC. So we just get a nice big USDC pump over here with the Ethereum that we left liquid and we just jump right back in. Now, I have, uh, I'm fortunate that I have the capital that I can do something like this, meaning that I could leave uh, 20, 30, 40% of my capital just completely liquid over here waiting for it. But the reason that I'm over here is specifically for those V3 pools. A uh, couple things, actually. Uh, one of the things that I, I've just been dining on that's been absolutely wonderful is since they, uh, they, they changed up the rules for the Ethereum L2s, and our Camelot is an L2 uh, well, I mean, it's built on Arbitrum, which is uh, L2 uh, of Ethereum. But the kicker over here is uh, this used to be a little bit expensive. It could be up into the dollar range, but now it's three cents. It's just three cents for me to claim my rewards. And these are paid out, as you can see right here, these are paid out directly in Ethereum and directly in USDC. Uh, I'm not getting paid out in a DEX token. The only DEX token that's sitting over here is Grail. Everything else is paid out in the tokens that you're pairing. I happen to like that because there's a reason that I'm over here doing what I'm doing. And if I'm putting up my Ethereum and my USDC, I want to get paid in Ethereum and USDC. They make that uh, quick, easy, and cheap. Cheap. Three cents. You just saw the trade yourself. It cost me three cents to harvest my rewards. Uh, if I wanted to do, let's, who we want to pick on here, Bell? Uh, let's, uh, we'll, we'll use uh, Astro Vault, I guess. If I wanted to collect these rewards, which is worth twenty uh, $54 right now, and I wanted to collect all of them at this time, it's going to cost me $0.32. Cents. Now, that's still not bad, guys. All right, let's not get nuts here because not too long ago, those uh, claiming those rewards was, what was it, Bell? It was almost like $3, wasn't it? It was, it was something just obscene. Yeah. I mean, $3 to claim 50 I, I'm not going to do it. We'll just leave it there. We'll let it cook. And the whole time that I'm leaving it there and just letting it cook means I'm not putting it to work. And that, uh, that bothers me. But Archway did do the right thing. They lowered down their fees, and, and here you are. But I don't think they're going to be able to lower them to uh, – they're not going to be able to lower them to the point where – uh, Arbitrum is doing it right now. So I like it. I've been over here a long, long time. They have tons and tons and tons of pools. Uh, pay attention to your APR, but more importantly, pay attention right here. Uh, I think I have a little bit of Arbitrum, so I'll just show you guys how to do it if you've never done one before. Uh, Arbitrum USDC, that's that's not a terrible pool. Uh, come over here. We're going to create the position. I happen to have some, so it's nice and easy. Now, Here's a uh, common range. There's your narrow range. You can see that you're 5% on either side of that. That's uh, dangerous. So if I was to jump in this pool right now, uh, if the Arbitrum went up 5% or down uh, 5, in this case, 4.95, then uh, all my Arbitrum is going to turn, either all of my USDC is going to turn into Arbitrum if it goes this way, or all of my Arbitrum is going to turn into USDC if it goes this way. So I tend to not do narrow. Uh, the extra 2% gets me through a couple days. So we'll do that. But I'll tell you what, just for this one, we're going to earn a hell of a lot less, but we'll stay in the pool longer and we'll update it as we go along. So we're going to go with a wide band here. If you go full range, you're, you're really not getting anything. But uh, if you go with the wide range right here at 11% on either side, that'll probably work. Let's see. I got 180, and that'll put 313. It's automatically going to pair it. I got plenty of USDC over here. So we're just going to add the liquidity. We'll put it to work. We'll see if it lasts. Uh, in this case, it costs us a nickel. It costs us a nickel to create that liquidity pool uh, or to pile into that liquidity pool. That's a nice deal. It, it costs nothing to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and do it. Now we're waiting for the 500 or 600 uh, validators that are going to have to come up here and approve this transaction. So sometimes it takes a little bit. Uh, there you go, guys. So once it's up, nice, easy, not hard to do. You just saw it for yourself. If, as long as you got the tokens over there in, in your wallet, then it's nice and easy to do it. Come over here, hit total deposit. It'll sort it everything from uh, most to least. And uh, as the day goes on, you're going to start to see some money showing up there. So that's uh, that's Camelot in a nutshell. And again, we're only showing the V3 pools. The V2 pools are just traditional. 
All right, you're pairing two things. You're getting a fixed rate. Your IL is still going to go back and forth, but you will never, well, I mean, you can get fully liquidated from one token to another, but it, it's really going to take a lot of movement for that to happen. So I, I wouldn't be terribly concerned. It happens a hell of a lot quicker here. And again, we'll update this one as you guys see. So we went wide range. We are not earning 151%. We're earning about a third of that if uh, anywhere between 40 and 50%. But that's fine. Maybe we'll stay in the pool longer. All right. So that's kind of Camelot in a nutshell. We have got to get to Arai. I had a long conversation with Eric yesterday and we were talking about Arai. So Got some information. Want to share it out with you. A couple other things that little things that we want to tip uh, that we would like to hit. And if we have time, we certainly will. Questions, comments. You guys know the drill. Either way, we'll be back. 60 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the podcast. I uh, I made the mistake and I looked at viewers. Man, we are just not resonating, are we? What is? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm okay because uh, I'm retired. I was I, I've been successful in crypto and I can do this full time now. Uh, as much as we'd like to talk to 300 people, we're never ever going to be that kind of show. The reason that we're talking about what we're talking about, guys, is because this is what I'm in. All right. This is where my money is. This is what I'm doing. And it's worked out really, really well for me. No part of this is financial advice. I'm just showing you this is how I made my money. So everything that I make over there on Camelot, it's real, real easy for me to move that stuff back and forth. But uh, one of the ways that I do it, and we'll do this one, and then we're going to get to uh, Rango. Bell said there's no question, so I can just carry on. Oh, we, We've got a massive two now. Okay, we have two questions. We'll, we'll get to them uh, end of the show. Uh, this is actually what I use to move my money back and forth. I, I don't like bridges. I'm not a fan. I understand the uh, necessity of them. I'm not crazy about it, but it is what it is. So I have a tendency to use Rango more than anything else because I, I happen to get the best deals. But I want you to look at this route. This is what's kind of funny on this one. So for me to move from Osmosis over to Arbitrum and turn whatever I have here over into Ethereum, I want you to look at the path that this thing is taking. So the Osmo or the USDC is leaving Osmo. It's going to Kajira via IBC turning it into Kuji, moving by the Maya protocol, becoming Rune, going from Rune on through Thorchain, becoming USDC. From USDC, it's going through Stargate, and it's coming out USDC on that side. It's going through Uniswap, and it's becoming Ethereum, and it's going to end up over there on my Ethereum, over on my Ethereum wallet. Uh, the transaction <laughs> it's gonna take uh, a minimum of a, a minimum of an hour i mean they they have it right there the time estimate it could happen in 53 uh the average it's gonna happen is about three and a half minutes and the max it's gonna take is 56 minutes um i'm not gonna do that right here on the live stream i'll actually make a separate vi another rango video to show you guys how this works, the different points that you need, because every one of these little protocols that you hit, uh, it's going to take gas. So you're going to have to have that gas in your wallet. And in this case, it's probably going to be it's going to be MetaMask. So you're going to have to have bits and pieces of all of these to be able to make these swaps. And I, I think it would come out better in a uh, in a single video. Actually, this is what we do. We'll show, we'll make some transfers back and forth. You guys can see them. You can figure out how much they cost. And that's going to be important uh, is the cost because you need to judge that based on how much money you're making or earning 
like uh, for example over on Camelot and if you're going to earn enough to even make the be able to pay for the trades to get it back to the other side so we'll make a video on that stuff and uh, take a look so uh, one more and uh, then we'll turn it over to whatever questions we have left so Rai you guys know that I'm on a mission over here right now so I'm I'm uh, turning OPM into a Rai USDT this is uh, where I've been, but now I'm starting to shove it up over to there. We're up to about $9,200 total, and I want to get that to 100000 Now, here's the problem that I have with this, and I've had it for a really, really long time. I had to bring Eric in on this because I've just, I've never quite been able to figure this one out, how they managed to maintain these just absolutely insultingly high APRs and how long they've, or how they've been able to do it for so long. Now, Arai as a uh, chain, there's very little AI over here. I mean, there is very little AI. I have looked through everything. All of these tokens, with the exception of uh, there's an injective Bitcoin and a couple of these other ones. But uh, most of these, like Milky, KWT, all these, these are actually uh, dApps that are built up or uh, these are actually other... Uh, projects that are built over there on Ori, and uh, none of them are AI focused. I haven't seen, there's one of them, uh, it's kind of a game, and there's a couple of other things, but nothing over here is really AI focused. It got its pump because of that, because it says it's Ori. Everybody believes it's uh, AI. They push the information out. They advertise that we're AI, AI, AI driven. I just haven't seen any, but we're not talking about that right now. We're actually talking about these. Now, how do they maintain it? Uh, over time, these things uh, all used to be paid out in Arai. Uh, maybe a year or so ago, they added another token in there called Arai X. Actually, let's see when they added that token because I don't exactly remember. Uh, it's just a derivative. That That's all it is. It's, it's simply a derivative. Let's go to Max. Uh, it was introduced in November 3rd, 2022. And they started slipping that in there. So uh, you were getting partial uh, Ori, and you were getting partial Ori X. Now, they've since pivoted to where it's completely Ori X. That's all you're getting paid in is a derivative token. So all those total claimable rewards up there are paid out in Ori X, and that's it, all the way up and down. Uh, this one is a self, uh, this particular token, when you see these ones that are paid out in these, these are uh, incentivized by the uh, project itself. They're not uh, incentivized by a rye. So this one, you're going to get paid out in OCH. This one, you're going to get paid out in area. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. So if you're in those pools, that's what you're going to get. But if you're in anything else, you're going to get paid out here in a rye X. Now, a rye X, uh, it's given me one of that funny kind of crescent, uh, B Cree feel in the fact that, uh, everything was paid out in B Cree or, uh, Crescent. It was paid out in Crescent, which you couldn't actually do anything with over on Crescent. You had to liquid stake it, turn it into Beecree, and then Beecree is what you could put to work. Now, we all saw how that model ended up. I mean, it's just there is no Crescent anymore. It died out. Uh, the only thing that was maintaining it was people constantly, constantly pushing money into Crescent. And it, we were all liquidating it. We were all just purely liquidating all of the rewards and we gobbled it up. It got farm flat and then they're done. So I had the same kind of concern uh, over here on Arai with them doing the same thing. Now, here's where it, it I think where it kind of gets a little bit interesting and where I'm starting to get just a little bit concerned. Uh, and it's actually coming over here in the in the supply. So they have a max supply of 19 million. They have a total supply of 17.6 and a circulating supply of 15.8. That means that they're running out of tokens. That means if uh, people continue to buy the, they don't have a hell of a lot left to be able to continue the, these incentives for very long. They just, they don't. Uh, they can't suddenly come up and say, okay, now we have a max supply of 30 million. You can't, it doesn't work that way contract is written it's set the way it's set and there's a max supply so they're not going to be able to really maintain these things for a whole hell of a lot longer now the token itself uh awry x it more or less runs with awry so uh awry proper and you can kind of see it if you break out the chart you're kind of going to see it but uh, Arai X takes it a little bit heavier because nobody's holding on to that token. They're liquidating that token. So 
it's uh, it, it's fallen down with a rye, but it's not really coming back up with a rye. It is absolutely getting bled. So the only way I can see that thing actually be maintained is if the team is using a rye to shore up and purchase a rye X. That's the only way I could see them going through this and maintaining that value or giving it any value whatsoever is the team or somebody very, very just nice that is buying up a whole hell of a lot of Arai and pairing it or uh, pairing it or purchasing Arai X. So there is one pool over here. That's that one right there, Arai X and Arai. And it has almost $4 million in it. And it also is being paid out straight in Arai X. But you can see that the fees and the volume on that pool are meager. $16,000 worth of volume over the last 24 hours on a liquidity pool that has $4 million on it tells me that that thing isn't getting used at all. I mean, this is the only people who are using that are the people who are liquidating Arai X to turn it into Arai proper. And I think there is one other one on here. Uh, yeah, this one right here. So Arai X and USDC. Uh, $800,000 in that pool, and it had $276 worth of volume. Nobody's using it. The only people who are using it are the people who are liquidating Arai X and turning it into USDC. I just don't see any other way. I just don't because there's there's nothing really appealing in there. So anybody who's pushing money in here like that 800,000, that's got to be team funds. I don't have any in there. So, it, you know, it kind of makes me wonder. It just seems like this is one hell of a circular firing squad that eventually is going to grind to a halt. The only way that they're going to be able to maintain this is if they continue to use Arai to buy Arai X so that they can pump the Arai X out into all of these pools that are paying directly out in a RIAX. So either they have a source of funding that I, I don't know about, and I'm perfectly willing to entertain that. But yeah, that one's going to be a little bit, it's a little bit sketchy for me. Now, they've been doing it for years and years and years. But this right here is grinding to a halt eventually because they're going to run out of tokens. So what happens at that point? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to continue to ride this one just as long as I can because those APRs are just stupid. But I tell you flat out right now, I take that Arai X every single day, everything that I get up there. And I have more than one wallet that I'm doing this on. Uh, this is the video wallet that I don't really care about. But I'm doing that every single day on every single one of these. I am simply turning it into cash, and I do it day after day after day. Most of the cash I'm using to uh, buy Jackal OPM. This is also very directly other people's money. So I am farming this chain to actually shore up another chain. But eventually this is going to grind to a halt. And, uh, yeah, so just be aware of it if you're playing in this one. That's all I wanted to put out. Public service uh, announcement from the podcast. All right, Belle, you said we had a couple questions because we are getting towards the end here. We do have just a couple. Uh, Tremont, any thoughts on Dissenter? Doomed early days or other? Uh, oof, boy, it's uh, you guys know I'm a big fan. Uh, I mean, right here, you're looking at Dissenter. Everything I do is on Dissenter. I think it's a fantastic uh, web browser. Uh, boy, they're not helping themselves. That That's uh, all I could really put out on this. Crypto moves on narratives, sadly. Uh, well, I mean, all the money chasing itself around the table moves on narratives. But uh, crypto kind of moves on hype. That's why we get some of these runaway valuations is it just moves on uh, market sentiment and hype. And the center does not help themselves. I see like effectively no posts on there. They had a crazy intern out there that was just posting this this silly stuff. I was waiting to see him start posting nudes. Uh they're they're not helping themselves. I do like the project. I think it's a fantastic browser. It's all I use. But they are absolutely not helping themselves. So take that for what it's worth. Bell, please carry on. All right, Armando Delgado, why is the slippage is too high in AstroVault? Armando, um, without being able to see exactly what you're seeing, I can't answer your question, man. Please definitely uh, message me directly, privately. That way we can dig into it for you, okay? All right, carry on, Bill. Andrew Grote, 
Arai with Adam is the real honeypot. Regardless of how you have been feeling on Adam, it will go up when alts start pumping. Those APRs on two appreciating, at, appreciating assets is beautiful. Oh yeah, man. I'm not, and I'm not arguing that. Uh, there, there it is. You can see where the bulk of mine is sitting right there, and it's pretty much evenly distributed throughout the rest of my wallets that I'm doing this on. Because again, I do, I, I do more. This one is just an experiment. I want to see how long it takes me to scalp a hundred grand. That that's literally it. We started with nothing, and we've just been building it up. But yeah, that is a uh, amazingly sweet pool. Uh, Adam has been running uh, so flat that I'm comfortable with it because the IL is not going to beat me up on uh, really one way or another. But as far as this uh, this future pump when alts start doing and all this other stuff, guy, I don't think alts are ever going to do what they did. All right, that already happened. We're going to do a new thing this time. So I'm, I am entertained uh, accordingly based on the way I see the market going. The market's going to shift to products. It's going to shift to dApps. Uh, the the moment of every altcoin, stars going to $90 and Adam going to $120, uh, those, that already happened. So we're getting ready to gear up for the next thing. I know people are really excited about alt season. Don't worry, it's coming and yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't think it is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shore up my money based on something that uh may or may not happen based purely on market sentiment. I don't do that. I'm gonna keep my money in smart where I think it's smart. Uh I'm gonna earn wherever the hell I can earn. And if we happen to get one, it's the cherry on top. But I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up with more either way. Uh is that it, Bell? Are we all done? We've got just a couple more. Uh Robbie Smith, Rango video would be much appreciated. Not a problem, man. I'll get that out today. Carry on, Bell. And last one from Lambis uh, Jala. What about Corium, Scott? Do an analysis on their smart tokens. I will take a look at Corium. Uh, we're getting a lot of people been pinging them over here. They want to see it over on Astro Vault. Is, is that going to happen, Bell? I, did, I don't know, guys. Who, I'm who not. Does know? <laughs> who does know? Who does know? Does Eric know? <laughs> I don't you know what? I can't answer for Eric in this case. Well, you know <laughs> not <what>? in his <laughs> shoes. Well, fortunately, he's going to be on the show tomorrow. So, guys, bring all of your Corium questions and, <laughs> and your packet questions. Bring all that fun stuff that's still in the works that has no answer yet. That'll be great. All right, guys. Great. Uh, I had a wonderful time today. Thank you for entertaining me. Uh, I know it's not what we've been doing, but... You know, everybody else is doing NFTs and airdrops, man, and I, I'm not going to go swim in those waters. I'm going to stick it with what has been working for me. Uh, we will be live tonight, and, uh, yeah, Bella will tell you all about it as she talks us up and talks us out. Been a great time, guys. Cheers. All right. Again, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who joined us this morning, we cannot say thank you guys enough. We are going to be back this evening at our normal time of 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Central Standard with Henry from Lunar Space. Really exciting project. Definitely check them out on lunarspace.io to learn a bit more and bring your questions. They're very open. They're very, he's going to be a fantastic guest on the stream tonight. Again, uh, we are going to be back this evening. In between now and this evening, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely don't hesitate to bring those to Scott or myself, Scott at thepodcast.com or Bella at thepodcast.com, and we'll get those answered for you. See you later, guys.
we are dropping new videos and podcasts every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And be sure to look for us on Instagram, Twitter, and Parlor at The Podcasts. Also, visit our page at thepodcast.com, all one word, for all of our most 